Welcome to Turkey. Of all of our travels, Turkey has been the most fascinating and I will show you the best places to visit while here on vacation. We start our Turkey travel in Istanbul at our bed and breakfast on a charming little street right next to the eminent Galata Tower. This tower was built in 1348 and is now home to a panoramic cafe at the top, but what most people visit the Galata Tower for now are the pictures. In fact, that is why we decided to stay here, because we wanted to get up early before everyone else to get unobstructed pictures with us in the tower. And we also wanted that amazing rooftop view of Galata and the rest of Istanbul as well. And that is what we got, staying at our specific bed and breakfast. The view is just incredible. There is nothing like it. But what makes this street even better is all the quaint little shops and places to eat. Now, can't visit Istanbul without visiting at least one of the mosques. There are three major mosques, all fairly close together. In fact, the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia are within a one minute walk of each other. As you can see, the grounds are very beautiful. As you enter the mosque, you will even notice their ritual start right away with the washings they do before entering the mosque. Their washings follow a distinct pattern and are only necessary if you're entering to worship. We visited Hagia Sophia because it was originally a Christian church of the Roman Empire and later converted into a mosque, then a museum, and recently a mosque once again. So you can tell there is a lot of history behind this mosque. As a place of worship, it is important to have the appropriate attire when entering the mosque. And my guide that I provide below this video will have a map to a nearby place that you can buy a hijab or a headscarf and that's where we bought ours before entering the mosque. We also got a guide right outside the mosque that showed us around and gave us all the history. Now something important to know before going, the mosque has distinct hours for visitors and for prayer, and we wanted to experience both, so we returned at night to see their prayer rituals too, and in the day we went just to visit and get some pictures. Timing is important for these mosques, so I highly recommend you get the schedules and find the best times to go for you. In my itinerary I have linked to as a guide to this video, I link to the prayer times and how to know the best times to go. So for prayer, go at the hours on that website. Close to the mosque was a restaurant. It was amazing as it had the floor pillow style seating and that's just the beginning of this amazing experience at this restaurant. The best part about this restaurant was the whirling dervishes as entertainment, if I'm allowed to call them entertainment. The practice of the whirling dervishes started in the 12th century and has been passed down ever since as a unique style of meditation within their dervish fraternity. The dervishes spin to the music in specific wardrobe and in certain positions. As for me, it was impressive to just watch them spin without getting too dizzy. And it is surprisingly captivating almost hypnotic, and at the same time, relaxing. But if the floor seating and the dervishes still don't do it for you, the restaurant has delicious food. It had my favorite Turkish dish, which is the testi, otherwise known as the pottery kebab, and I'm probably butchering the names. Now, as for the food in Turkey, I kept telling my family to order as much as you want because the food is basically free. It is really inexpensive here, in other words. Most of the time, I would eat for less than $5 per person, and we ordered until we stuffed ourselves, and it was good. Now, if you eat nearby, you're going to want a great dessert after. That is where sticky ice cream comes into play. In Turkey, their ice cream is known as dundurma. Now, you don't just want your dundurma anyway. You want a good show to go along with it, and the show is at your expense. But if you're a game, it's really fun and kind of funny. You can't just go to any Dunderma stand. I know, because I went to plenty, and this guy was the best that we found here. I wish I had time to show you the others and how this guy compares. But I have a video with more about the different Dunderma stands, so you can see what I mean at the end of this video. I will have that video in a playlist, and you can watch that with all the individual activities I did in Turkey with more footage after this travel guide video. Just click on the link of the playlist at the end of this video. Yo, what? 
So at each Dundermistan, while they're trying to give you the ice cream, they're also trying to keep it from you. My favorite part about this guy was that it was almost like a magic show because he makes the cone disappear at certain points. This guy was actually hard to find online, so I will put his exact location on the itinerary. Very close to Hagia Sophia is a spot called Basilica Cistern. I like to be real with my viewers in all my videos. This place was good for a few pictures, but other than that, I felt like it was kind of a tourist trap and not really worth the money, especially with so much to do in Istanbul and other places. But that's my opinion. Istanbul and Turkey in general is all about the view. The 360 Panorama restaurant is one of the best places to get a view of the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia from above. This is a popular restaurant and the food here was good, but the view is what it is all about here. What would a visit to Istanbul be without visiting the Grand Bazaar? The Grand Bazaar is one of the largest and oldest covered shopping markets in the world. It is regarded as the first shopping mall and gets over 91 million visitors a year. And if you followed all of my travels, Turkey is the country we shopped at the most as the quality of the products was a lot better than other markets that we've been to in the rest of the world. The shopping here is so good that we even bought pendant lights for our kitchen while we were here in Turkey. It is one of the best places to discount shop for just about anything, including carpets, trinkets, spices, lanterns, jewelry, dish sets, and lamps. The lantern shop was probably our favorite place to shop as it made a great photo op as well. It's just so cool that everything is so old in the Grand Bazaar and yet so current. I mean, you are shopping where people shopped in the 15th century and where people would go to trade goods. So I highly recommend the shopping you can do while in Turkey. And you can tell we did our fair share of shopping, especially here at the Grand Bazaar. So much history and such good shopping, I recommend couldn't already tell, rooftops are kind of a thing here in Turkey. Possibly none of them are as unique as this rooftop. The view once again is just incredible, with birds flying by and all around, and a view of all the major mosques nearby. Now this spot is fairly new because there used to be another popular rooftop just like this one called Kube, but it recently was shut down, and while this one really doesn't have a big a name as Kube, the view with the birds is just as fantastic with all the carpets laid down and it's such a nice setup. To get a photo shoot here, all you need to do is show up with a little bit of cash and it does cost a little bit for that quick little photo shoot. I will link to this location in my itinerary because otherwise it's pretty impossible to find the location for a tourist. Now, what I found curious is that the people who put this rooftop together only used one corner of the rooftop. But if you look at it from another angle in the other direction on the rooftop, it is just as amazing, if not more amazing. From the other angle, you can get a close-up view of the Suleimani Mosque, which is highly impressive, especially from the outside. A lot of countries have their own style of massages and spas. Turkey is no different. Just FYI, Turkish bathhouses are also called hammams, and they are awesome. This specific hammam is over 300 years old. Even though they wouldn't let me film the experience, I will show you the inside of a different hammam later in this video when we get to Cappadocia, so that you can see what they are all about inside. Now it was off from Istanbul to the ancient city of Ephesus. I almost decided not to go to Ephesus, but actually it was one of the most surprisingly awe-inspiring things I've done on all my travels. It was very interesting to see what survived and what did not survive during the centuries of wear and tear. The ancient ruins were magnificent and to think we were walking where people like the Apostle Paul walked and would preach to the people here in these amphitheaters. Just mind-blowing to me. However, this ancient city has more to it than just that. What was cool for us is that we got there right when the gates opened. Having the grounds all to ourselves for a little while was well worth getting up early even on vacation. I always tell people waking up early on vacations to visit popular attractions is the way to go. I, it always enhances any experience without other people around to be there 
and just be able to take in the serenity and the sacredness of a location. The ruins make for an amazing backdrop for pictures, but everywhere you go, the scenery just takes you back. My favorite part was the facade of the old library at Ephesus that had been re-erected after an earthquake brought it down. It was so impressive and large, and it really gives you a feel of how things would have felt in Ephesus in that time. It's just amazing that you can literally reach out and touch history and feel it in your hands. Also while here, there are excavation sites of all the rooms where people live, and you can see the art they even had on their walls. So if you're thinking about skipping Ephesus, I would suggest you reconsider. I am so glad that we did. Now, if you like to stay in places that really give you the feel for where you're at, then I recommend in staying in Nea Ephesus Hotel during your visit to the Ephesus area. It's a unique little hotel with tons of art and statues that not only adorn the premises, but your room is also just as amazing. Their pool has a great view and they have a great restaurant here as well, so you don't have to go looking for food. I mean, it is really, really good food. After Ephesus, we drove a couple hours away to our next location, and we started there at another amazing restaurant with a great view. Okay, so we weren't here in the city of Pamukkale for the food, but we were here for that white mineral hill that the restaurant overlooked. Let me introduce to you Pamukkale by saying there is a little known secret to arrive to Pamukkale before all the gates open, so you can get to the attraction before most other people do. You see, most people go to Pamukkale to take pictures of this phenomenon that is formed from centuries of deposits from that light blue mineral water that forms an all-white mountain. This makes for a sight that you will never see again, let alone taking a dip in the warm water to enjoy the scenery if you choose to do so at the same time. The secret is to arrive at Hierapolis, which is the kind of the area or the park that it resides in, at the opening of the South Roman Gate, which opens earlier than all the other gates of the park. But you will still have access to everything. This place was heavenly, one of the most heavenly places we had been to. And you can see all the places we've been to if you subscribe to this channel or you visit my Instagram. Another upside to arriving early in the morning is you just get to experience the mountain in its serenity with some hot air balloons that are also taking off early morning and then feel the warmth of the flowing thermal water as well. Once on top of Pamukkale, you will see why it is so impressive. You get to actually be in and on and feel the Earth's greatest gem. I will tag the south gate in my map that comes with the itinerary in the YouTube description of this video. But before leaving Hierapolis, there's another gem located within the park that is worth a stop. This is the Cleopatra Pools, also located within Hierapolis. Now, these pools may not look like much. The water is kind of murky, the pool is busy with tourists, and there are some vendors around selling merch. But what is cool is you are actually swimming in ancient ruins. That's right, this pool was a gift from Mark Anthony to Cleopatra. In the 17th century, an earthquake pummeled the surrounding building, and remnants of the massive marble columns still lie in the pool today. Oh yes, you are really swimming in ancient ruins, and outside of video games, where are you ever going to say you've done that again? But now to Cappadocia, the most fascinating city we have ever visited. We started by waking up before dawn to see the spectacle everyone travels to see while in Cappadocia. It starts with a few hot air balloons flickering in the morning, which in itself is so pretty. But then eventually, a few hot air balloons start rising in the air. Before you know it, close to a hundred hot air balloons are scattered throughout the morning sky, traveling wherever a breeze will take them. This is one of two ways to experience the hot air balloon event here in Cappadocia. Watching them from a good vantage point, and then also getting in a hot air balloon. But trust me, just watching them is almost as incredible as being in them. There are a few great places to watch the balloons take off. However, I booked a specific cave hotel to see the balloons take off. And yes, I said cave hotel. Why? This specific hotel had, in my opinion, the best view of the whole valley 
when balloons took off in the morning. In fact, this landscape is also ideal for ATV rides, which is what we did later that evening to both tour the area and watch the sunset. The quads were thrilling, traveling around all the steep rock formations that are just superb and so peculiar. At one point, our tour guide took me on a little joy ride that was awesome. These formations are so monumental and you just fly around them and there is more at every turn. What is interesting about the formations is that they are really hard rock, but at the same time, also kind of soft and fairly easy to carve out. So early civilizations, including some Christian civilizations, would carve into the rocks and make themselves abodes, churches, and other dwellings for themselves. In just a second, you will see they even did this for entire cities. So there is a lot of story around these rocks. In fact, they hardened from volcanic ash called tuff and that tuff eroded over time, leaving these enormously impressive rocks. So on this ride, we made a few stops where some of the more impressive dwellings and rocks were. Then to end our journey, you make your way to a point where you just watch a stunning sunset. Now, just for a moment to be real, I'm pretty good at making it seem like we are all alone, but actually this sunset was quite the party scene that happens every night. I'm talking hundreds of ATVs, music and wine and everything. So don't be fooled, this part wasn't as personal as the beginning of our private sunset ATV tour. Now, as I promised, the Turkish bath. You want an authentic experience for your Turkish bath or hammam. You can tell if it's an authentic hammam because these rooms have a few characteristics. Ceiling domes with holes in the top, and also in the center of the room, there will be a large table with faucets all along the wall around it. This one is the Kelebek Hammam, and it is the best and most authentic one in the Cappadocia area. The rooms I described are called Sikakli, and the structure is important for the amplified sound of splashing water and the circulation of pleasant aromas in the air. I highly recommend this one. You start off by lying on that center table with a washing of warm water poured across your body and then a scrub off of all your dead skin. After that, it's time for my favorite part, the bubbles. Yes, the bubbles make a great lubricant for the body wash and massage, but also it is a vitalizing experience to feel all the bubbles popping randomly across your body. It is a very relaxing sensation. In my opinion, you haven't really been to Turkey unless you have had a Turkish bath. And once again, the Kelebek Hammam is the best place to experience the Turkish bath. Now, you can really make it a spa experience by having an add-on massage and a sauna with the bath, but those are add-ons to what is the essential Turkish bath experience. So it was off to do more shopping and picture taking at Gallery Ikman. So this is an ornate carpet store in the middle of Cappadocia. This store has stacks and stacks of thousands of carpets covering every inch of the place. People generally like to buy carpets while in Turkey because carpets are part of the lifestyle here. And thus, there is such a selection of carpets in Turkey. But Gallery Ikman just takes the cake when it comes to carpet selection. What is interesting is that eventually people notice how pretty the atrium at this carpet store was, being draped with carpets all around you, and then that great lighting of the atrium. So eventually it became another spot for beautiful photo shoots. Now, the owner is really friendly, but at the same time, he would get really annoyed when people would come and try and sneak pictures without booking an appointment. So make sure you stop by and make an appointment for pictures as soon as you get into Cappadocia. It truly is breathtaking to see how adorned the setup is in the atrium at Gallery Ikman. Make sure you stop by, especially if you're going to buy a carpet in Turkey. Now, as we hinted at earlier, some civilizations built entire cities underground in the hardened volcanic rock. This is Kaymakli, which is one of those cities in the area. There is another called Derinkuyu as well. The two underground cities are connected by man-made tunnels, but you can only visit one or the other at a time. 
I preferred visiting K Mock Leap, mostly because I was with my baby and this one wasn't nearly as steep as Darren Kuyu. Though the hallways of K Mock Leap are more constricted, but to me that made it much more of a fun experience. These locations were started in the 8th or 7th century BC, and over time through the centuries they were added to. But also, the function of them changed throughout all the years as well. For example, even as late as the 14th century, the underground tunnels were used by Christians as protection from Mongolian incursions. Then at other times, the tunnels were used for storing livestock. But they are really cool as the caves make this multi-leveled labyrinth of rooms and hallways. Don't worry, there are arrows pointing you along the way so you will not get lost. But you travel along the underground path and come across their rooms, their wineries, churches, graveyards, and many other interesting areas. I love the underground city. I wish it were available for a big game of hide and seek. And more than that, just to experience the unique architecture. You may think that looks claustrophobic and the halls are really constricted, but don't worry, they're not too long and at least they give you little natural places to sit down. This is yet one more place that will blow you away. The next morning, we went up in the hot air balloons, as opposed to just watching them from the ground as we did the day before. It is such a great experience as all the balloons around you start taking off, and before you know it, you are in the air with all of them as well. Now, I picked this specific company because they had an option to go up in the hot air balloon for a longer time than the other hot air balloons. And I wanted the option of an extra 30 minutes. And trust me, it was so worth it. The time goes by so fast anyway, so you might as well get as much time as you can out of the experience. What is awesome about this activity is for once, you want more tourists doing the hot air balloons because it makes it that much more magical and the more hot air balloons, the better the experience. Now, the landscape from above the valley is amazing, which once again is why this spectacular even exists. So I recommend going and taking it all in. The crisp morning air, the beautiful rock formations, and passing above and through the valleys. Eventually, you get to see the sunrise from the hot air balloon over the mountains, and the view is like none other. You just feel so free. It's hard to explain, but if you are only mildly afraid of heights, I actually still recommend this. It feels really safe, and the takeoff is so subtle that it may not even bother you at all because you'll be in the air before you know it. At one point, we even saw wild horses in one of the valleys we dipped into. Really, it's no wonder this is so popular. It is one of those things where pictures and video just don't do it justice. And alone, this will make your trip to Turkey worth it. And you get a medallion for your bravery. Walking around Cappadocia itself is just so great. It's one of those places that just being there is a treat because it is all so new and scenic at every turn. I mean, even if you came here and did nothing but live life, it would still be a great trip. We don't get to experience a society where everything is actually built into the landscape. I mean, everything from the businesses to the art and the hotels themselves are all built into the rock formations. I mean, how cool is it just to stay in a cave hotel? Now for the best of all the cave hotels, which was the one we stayed in. Like I said, from its rooftop, it has the best vantage point of all the balloons that take off. The premises are stunning and the hotel hosts are great too. Every morning their complimentary breakfast was the best assortment. Now while I think you really can't go wrong with most cave hotels, the rooms are so beautiful here and the rooftop is just the best and it has all of today's luxuries while staying in a cave. And another thing about our room, the King Suite even had its own balcony to look off of. On my travels, I've stayed in tree houses, huts, bubble hotels, grass roofed huts, and this is at the top with all of the coolest places I have ever been to which is probably why Lost LeBlanc, another YouTube traveler, was staying at the hotel at the same time as me. I mean, you can even watch the balloons from your bed if you so desire. 
So make sure you subscribe to my channel as I find all the best places to stay, things to do, and ways to experience them wherever we go. And stay up to date by joining my Instagram as well. Also, don't forget to do a few hikes while you're in Cappadocia. The best is to just wander around and find a spot to hike and watch the sunset on your own. When we were hiking around, that is when we noticed some people actually still live in these caves and they seemed abandoned at first sight. I'm sure there are even better hiking spots than the ones we found as well. We were slightly limited with a baby on what hills we can hike up, but I imagine some of these have amazing views of the sunset. If you love travel, make sure you subscribe. If you want to see more of the footage of the individual activities we did from most of the places I went in Turkey, I will put them in a playlist at the end of this video. And then also I will put in another playlist all of our trips including Iceland, Jamaica, Ireland, Thailand, and more. Speaking of wandering, if you watch my travel tips video, you know why I think it is important to drive and rent a car in almost every country you travel to. It is so fun and you really get to see the countryside but also you can venture off to explore little places on your own. We found this amazing chocolate restaurant at a nearby mall. I think it's even a chain restaurant that is unique to Turkey. At least their Instagram makes it seem that way. So if you want to visit this mall and visit Choco Labs, I highly recommend it. Just a warning, the further away you go from the main travel spots, the less they understand English. But to me, it makes the experience that much more enthralling and unforgettable. So like, subscribe, and watch a video from one of these other playlists now.